How's it going everyone? It's Sam. Today I want to talk to you about a stock that a lot of people are calling the next Peloton. So this one is merging with a fitness subscription based company that has a health food line. I'm going to walk you through it, tell you what I think about the company, how I kind of compare it to Peloton and what I'm doing with it because uh, the SPAC market in general has just been going insane and this one went up a significant amount last Friday and then again significantly on Monday. So if you guys like this, please leave a thumbs up before we get started. I appreciate that. It goes a far way. If you guys want, you can hit subscribe. Uh, I really appreciate that too. We do daily videos, sometimes multiple times a day when there's a lot of relevant information. There's a link down there to my Patreon. If you want to know exactly when I buy or sell a stock, you can definitely check that out. Uh, we've been buying a lot of stocks and doing quite well. There are over 5,000 people in there. So if you want to join part of that community, you definitely can. There's also a link down there to Webull. If you want to deposit $100, you can get a couple free stocks. And, you know, I like the platform in general. I use it. I like it for news too. And last thing, there is a link down there to BlockFi. In case you want some interest on your cryptocurrencies, they pay you 6% on Bitcoin and there is a dip today. So if you want to, you know, throw some money in there so that way you can get some exposure to Bitcoin, I definitely understand. I use them personally and I have about $150,000 in BlockFi right now between Stablecoin, Ethereum, and on Bitcoin. So the company that we're looking at today is Forest Road Acquisition Corp. And they just announced a SPAC merger just recently. You can see on Friday, they went up significantly. They're sitting around $12 and they have a couple Disney executives. You can see here from Friday till today, it went up about 20%. Now they are merging with the Beachbody company. Now this is something that I hadn't really looked into in a long time. This is on the SEC website. So uh, I'm just going to go through the investor presentation with you guys, show you what they have to offer. First of all, you have to realize that they have a, a significant amount of experience just in business in general. You can see they have NFL Films, Procter & Gamble, Sony, Pepsi, TikTok, ByteDance, Spotify, Walt Disney. There's a lot of There's a lot of experience on this team. Now, they're trying to capitalize on a couple different things. First of all, they're trying to capitalize on the digital subscription. You know, a lot of companies have done really well with that this year. Disney, Spotify, Netflix, also Connected Fitness. If you look at Peloton, and again, this company, a lot of people are considering like the next Peloton. Peloton's been able to capitalize on this better than anyone. And then Growth, Consumer, Health, and Wellness. You can see some of these companies down here. Uh, I don't know how well a lot of these companies that have done specifically as opposed to these Pelotons and uh, Netflixes of the world this last year, but I think this is something they're trying to capitalize on. They have a couple different parts of their of their business that they're bringing together. They have Beachbody, they have MYX Fitness, and then they have OpenFit. So they have a couple different parts of their business, obviously. This seems more like Peloton. This is a couple different things thrown together and then this is also a couple different things thrown together and they're trying to bring this all into one as a digital subscription and as a product platform to sell uh, which i think will work well together uh, because of the fact that they'll be able to run workouts and be like hey if you want this you know maybe we can give you a, a discount or something like that they have 89 percent gross margins on digital subscriptions they have 32 percent engagement about 450 million dollars worth of revenue is expected for this coming year for their digital subscriptions and it's about a hundred dollars a year now they are expecting this and they actually they saw this grow a lot last year but you can tell that they're expecting it to grow a lot this year because if you just divide this out 450 million divided by 100 they're expecting you know to be able to increase about 60 70 percent in their paid subscriptions this year now i will say they do have a lot of products uh, i mean i think the beach body brand in general is pretty significant they have a lot of uh, uploaded videos and they've been in the game for a very long time you can see too that they have a, a good amount of views no matter the year you can see that it is spread out over time i mean the it looks like the most viewed program is from 2011 to 2015 and then it goes down from there and i think this this does show that they're not just uh, banking on new films doing really well or new videos or on r really old ones uh, picking up steam or anything like that it seems like they're well diversified over those different movies now they have live classes overseen by trainers too so keep that in mind it's similar to i think what peloton does now their bike is about thirteen hundred dollars thirty dollars per month uh it seems very similar to peloton now i 
I haven't looked into Peloton very seriously in a while because honestly, it just hasn't seemed like it was a good valuation for a while, but it, it seems very similar to what they have. Now it does seem a little bit cheaper than Peloton's option because Peloton seems like it's right around $40 a month. Now I don't look on Peloton's website that often. So I mean, maybe there's some cheaper option, but this is what I found. And then their bikes uh, are a little bit more expensive on Peloton too. It's about 1800 to 2000 for the bikes as opposed to about 1300. Now this, this does include assembly and delivery and stuff like that. So maybe the other one doesn't, but this seems like it's a little bit more expensive than the other option. They have about 100 million in revenue from this side of their business with about 89% subscription margins. Then they also have products, right? This is not gonna be as high margin of a business, but they have nutrition products and I think it works well that they can sell from their different subscriptions and lead them into the products too, which I think will be pretty significant. They expect about $560 million in revenue in 2021 from this. So they're expecting this investment from the SPAC to go a very far away in their business model. You can see they had about 790 million worth of revenue two years ago, 756 in 2019, 880 in 2020. Then they're expecting this to blow up from here. Now, this is where I'm gonna give my actual opinion. I think you can see that their business model was actually decreasing. And then because of the fact that the pandemic came and they were able to increase their subscriptions a significant amount, right? They they went up, I think it, they showed about 50% or something like that. I think that's why they're actually having increased revenue last year. Otherwise, I think they would have had another down year. And now they're expecting to grow at a very high rate, right? They're expecting another 230 million dollars this year in revenue and then it to continue upward because of this investment now i could be wrong right this investment could do really well for them but i find it hard to believe that they're going sideways for a long time and then all of a sudden they're going to take off i mean maybe maybe if the pandemic stays around and people don't feel comfortable uh, in person at different gyms but i think a lot of people do like going to gyms and i realize some people will be working at home but honestly as someone that works at home I really like going out and you know working out somewhere else because of the fact that it actually gets me outside the house so I'm not staying in the same 30 foot bubble all day long. Now, I could be wrong on that, so you know, you can take a look at it and see what you think about it yourself. Now, the company is going to be valued around 3 billion dollars. Now, it has gone up a significant amount. I mean, it's gone up to about a 5 billion dollar valuation. They'll get about 424 million dollars. Uh, for their balance sheet after some different proceeds and some estimated fees and stuff like that. So that's something to keep in mind. This is kind of how it's broken down here. A couple of the founders are keeping the majority of it. FRX founders are going to have about 1.1. So the SPAC, uh, the founders of the SPAC are going to get about 1.1%. Pipe shares are going to be about 6.6%. The public shares are going to be about 8.8%. And then other owners are going to be 36%. Now, I don't know who these other owners are. I tried to look in here and they don't say it either. They do have a pretty good valuation compared to Peloton. I mean, they're around $5 billion worth market cap. They're around 900 million in revenue. So that puts them at a price to sales ratio right around five to six. And Peloton is bringing in about $3 billion worth of revenue. And they're sitting at a market cap of 38 billion. So they're around a price to sales of 12 to 13. So honestly, it, it is a very attractive valuation compared to Peloton. I don't know if I'm going to buy in yet. I'll be honest. I don't think I will at this point, even though it's a pretty low price to sales ratio. I feel like there are probably better places to put my money at this point, but I could see this being a pretty good company to own for the long term if they're able to actually get this revenue that they're expecting. Now, will they be able to increase revenue a significant amount? They're going to throw a lot of money into marketing. So possibly I could always be wrong though. So do your research with this one. I personally just feel like there are better places to put my money, but it's pretty, it's been pretty hard to lose money on SPACs. It's been hard to lose money on subscription based services. So I could be completely missing the ball here. I think with a lot of these companies, a lot of them have done well. The question is though, if the pandemic ends and we open up, 
is this company going to be one that people want to keep money in? So that's something to consider. Uh, definitely do your research with this one. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not a stock analyst. So do your own research, but I appreciate it. Thank you guys for watching. If, if you guys want to know exactly when I buy and sell a stock, you can check out the link down below to Patreon. If, if you want to get some free money, you can sign up for Webull. Also, there is that link down there to BlockFi. In case you do want to sign up, they are giving a bonus if you deposit a certain amount and you get interest on your cryptocurrency. So thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. And I will see you guys in the next video. If you want to see five different stocks that are in the space sector, I just did a video on it this weekend. I'll put it up here on the end screen. Thanks.